RGB fans were pretty cool back in the Middle Ages. These days, we have screens on our fans, or at least your nan does, because now all the cool kids, they have the holographic fan. Look at this right here. This is the holo fan from Coolify and it. can display a persistence of vision image on your computer. Let's have a look. Let's see what we have in the box here. We have a little note with the specs, 2600 RPM, 52 CFM, and 2.75 millimeters of H2O. Apparently this thing will do 33 decibels of noise, which is pretty darn good, especially given that it has no PWM. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Also in here, of course, we have the fan and a couple of fan screws, yeah. There we go, that's it. Some context for these specs, they're perfectly fine. As for the fan design itself, it looks like your pretty typical cheap RGB fan. You find a lot of these for like three, four dollars on AliExpress or Wish. But this one right here is a little bit beefier looking and it has this bar right down the center. How this works is the fan spins and then the lights light up in here corresponding to where it is around here in the rotation. And by using maths and magic, you're able to get an image out of that somehow. Let's see if we can just have it work. Come on, do it. Oh, that is cool. Wow, this is a loud fan. That's unfortunate. I feel like their 33 decibel claim is a bit of a fib. So Bell just said, apparently if you give it less beans, it will sound better. That is not a thing. This right here has to spin at 2600 RPM all the time. There are only two leads going to the motherboard on this, which means you have no control over the speed whatsoever. And there is a good reason for that. So see how we have this image right here? That is based on the RPMs of the fan. So if I start slowing it down, you can see that the image just kind of starts to fall apart. Now, Coolify does have a new version that's going to come out that will apparently go down to about 900 RPM, which should be way quieter than this. But the whole maths of being able to find out like how fast it's going and turn that into an image that makes any sense at all is pretty difficult. Because again, speed changes, whole thing falls apart. Bell says apparently it's way quieter at nine volts, which you don't get from a computer, but I'm willing to try it. All right, I got my sound level meter because I think their specs are horrifically wrong. Let's just unplug it for a second just to make sure that it's not super duper loud in here. So this system is roughly, we can call it 43 decibels thereabout. Now I can plug in this fan and we'll see just how much louder it gets. We're looking at about 50 dB. A lot of the times I'll do it from a foot, which is about right here, which is 53 dB. That's 20 decibels more than they claim. And 20 decibels is a lot. That's a shocking amount. Three decibels is a doubling in power. 20 is a lot, it's logarithmic. Now Bell says that Reddit says that at nine volts, this fan will be a lot quieter, which makes a fair bit of sense. But at the same time, I suspect that's going to completely ruin our little holographic display, but I'm willing to give it a try. There we go, fans working off the bench power supply. Well, it's setting nine. It's not quite stable, but I would say that it is good enough. Would you say that's good enough, Bell? I'd say that's working. Okay, so it does stabilize. It, I guess it does have two modes. You can run it at nine volts. It stabilizes itself. Can I go lower? Doesn't like eight. Not a fan of eight. Is it stabilizing? No. All right, nine volts does seem better. The noise is much more acceptable. One more thing we're gonna test, low noise adapter. If that gets us nine volts, then we're not in a bad spot. Yeah, when I got some low noise adapters, this is basically just a resistor in your little fan lead. We're going to attach that and with any luck, that will solve our it being really freaking loud problems. The noise is too low for it. Darn. Well, we tried, let's put them in the system. <laughs> I turned off the system, but we still have Linus on our CPU cooler. Very strange. Even stranger that this is how I segued to our sponsor.
Thanks to Vessi for sponsoring this video. Their courtside classics take a timeless 90s look and upgrade it with Vessi's Dymatex technology, which they say is, even in the most torrential downpours, dry sock guaranteed. It also has a soft and flexible tongue, plus removable insoles, so they fit your unique feet. You can snag your pair today at vessi.com slash short circuit, or use the link in our description to get 15% off your first order at checkout. This is a real pain in the butt. This case was very clearly designed to have the fans on the other side, and it shows because this is difficult. Ugh. There we go. All right, prepare yourself for some noise. Oh, oh, Hey, get it. Why are you? Oh dear. Oh man, one of them came with images on it. Look at that, it's pretty cool. So the little POV thing sticks out beyond the bounds of the fan, and this case is not quite made to be in that location, so uh, we're gonna make it be fine. This is where I have to say that the LTT screwdriver is not a prying tool. I'll try this at home. Just turn off the computer. <laughs> oh, I have an idea, I have an idea, I have an idea. There's these little screws right here. I really hope that when I undo these screws that just the plastic frame on the outside comes off and not the entire thing. Perfect! All right, they're all working. That was easy and didn't require any bending or destruction at all. One thing you'll notice here is that the motherboard thinks that there are no fans attached because it does not have a PWM header or anything like that. It's just two wires. So we'll have to tell it to ignore that. All right, we are on the short circuit phone because uh, my phone I didn't want to use because you need to just sideload this app from a random link on a website. Fantastic. And also it is named M3D Float View. Sure. So these fans, you connect to via Wi-Fi to control them. So here we go, hollow this one. They do apparently have a Windows app coming. That would be nice. As you can see, the one in the back that came pre-configured with some cool stuff is doing cool stuff. It'd be nice if we could also do cool stuff on these. What are all these devices? I closed the app and opened it back up and I have all of this random stuff. None of which I added. I was hoping that switching over to iPhone would just magically make things work, but it's not. Okay, I was able to connect to the back fan, which is different than these ones. And I do have control. So if you look here, I have got a video playing and I can hit a thing and a different video starts playing. It's actually quite responsive how quickly it changes between the stuff. So that's cool. It'd be way cooler if I could change any of the ones in the front. Well, I don't really know what to say. I've been spending the last 20 minutes trying to get these to work. I think I have connected to two of the fans, but when I tried to send a new video clip to them, it's just stuck at 0%. Uh, I don't really know what to say other than this clearly should have been left in the oven quite a bit longer. I do know that they were working on a version that has the 900 RPM lower limit and PWM control, which would allow this to be not super freaking loud. Uh, also, the app doesn't seem to work. If there was a Windows app, that would be pretty cool. Or any other kind of control, like USB control would be nice, some sort of a controller, that would be pretty cool. Uh, not using Wi-Fi would be pretty great. It's disappointing. Coolify, I was hoping for a bit better. Oh yeah, and they're on sale right now for 40 US dollars. Uh, I would wait for Gen 2 if this is the sort of thing that you want, unless you're a real sucker for punishment and you really, really, really want this right now. But what I want right now is for you to hit like, get subscribed, and just have a great old day. See you later.